Post-transcriptional modification or co-transcriptional modification is a set of biological processes common to most eukaryotic cells by which an RNA primary transcript is chemically altered following transcription from a gene to produce a mature, functional RNA molecule that can then leave the nucleus and perform any of a variety of different functions in the cell. There are many types of post-transcriptional modifications achieved through a diverse class of molecular mechanisms. Perhaps the most notable example is the conversion of precursor messenger RNA transcripts into mature messenger RNA that is subsequently capable of being translated into protein. This process includes three major steps that significantly modify the chemical structure of the RNA molecule, the addition of a 5 feet cap, the addition of a 3 feet polyadenylated tail, and RNA splicing. Such processing is vital for the correct translation of eukaryotic genomes because the initial precursor mRNA produced by transcription often contains both exons coding sequences and introns non -coding sequences. .Splicing removes the introns and links the exons directly, while the cap and tail facilitate the transport of the mRNA to a ribosome and protect it from molecular degradation. Post-transcriptional modifications may also occur during the processing of of other transcripts which ultimately become transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, or any of the other types of RNA used by the cell. <laughs> mRNA processing The pre-mRNA molecule undergoes three main modifications. These modifications are 5 feet capping, 3 feet polyadenylation, and RNA splicing, which occur in the cell nucleus before the RNA is translated. Topic: 5 feet processing. Topic: capping. Capping of the pre-mRNA involves the addition of 7-methylguanosine to the 5 feet end. To achieve this, the terminal 5 feet phosphate requires removal, which is done with the aid of a phosphatase enzyme. The enzyme guanosyl transferase then catalyses the reaction, which produces the diphosphate 5 feet end. The diphosphate 5 feet end then attacks the alpha phosphorus atom of a GTP molecule in order to add the guanine residue in a 5, 5 triphosphate link. The enzyme guanine N7 methyltransferase cap -M -tase", transfers a methyl group from s adenosylmethionine to the guanine ring. This type of cap, with just the M7G in position is called a cap-0 structure. The ribose of the adjacent nucleotide may also be methylated to give a CAP1. Methylation of nucleotides downstream of the RNA molecule produce CAP2, CAP3 structures and so on. In these cases the methyl groups are added to the 2 feet O groups of the ribose sugar. The cap protects the 5 feet end of the primary RNA transcript from attack by ribonucleases that have specificity to the 3 5 phosphodiester bonds. Topic: Three feet processing. Topic: Cleavage and polyadenylation. The pre-mRNA processing at the three feet end of the RNA molecule involves cleavage of its three feet end and then the addition of about 250 adenine residues to form a poly A tail. The cleavage and adenylation reactions occur if a polyadenylation signal sequence 5 AAUAAA3 is located near the 3 feet end of the pre-mRNA molecule, which is followed by another sequence, which is usually 5 CA3 and is the site of cleavage. A GU-rich sequence is also usually present further downstream on the pre-mRNA molecule. After the synthesis of the sequence elements, two multisubunit proteins called cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor and cleavage stimulation factor are transferred from RNA polymerase II to the RNA molecule. The two factors bind to the sequence elements. 
A protein complex forms and contains additional cleavage factors and the enzyme polyadenylate polymerase PAP. This complex cleaves the RNA between the polyadenylation sequence and the GU-rich sequence at the cleavage site marked by the 5 CA3 sequences. Poly -a polymerase then adds about 200 adenine units to the new 3 feet end of the RNA molecule using ATP as a precursor. As the poly -a tail is synthesized, it binds multiple copies of poly -a binding protein, which protects the 3 end from ribonuclease digestion. Topic: Splicing. RNA splicing is the process by which introns, regions of RNA that do not code for proteins, are removed from the pre-mRNA and the remaining exons connected to re-form a single continuous molecule. Exons are sections of mRNA which become expressed or translated into a protein. They are the coding portions of a mRNA molecule. Although most RNA splicing occurs after the complete synthesis and end capping of the pre-mRNA, transcripts with many exons can be spliced co-transcriptionally. The splicing reaction is catalyzed by a large protein complex called the spliceosome assembled from proteins and small nuclear RNA molecules that recognize splice sites in the pre-mRNA sequence. Many pre-mRNAs, including those encoding antibodies, can be spliced in multiple ways to produce different mature mRNAs that encode different protein sequences. This process is known as alternative splicing, and allows production of a large variety of proteins from a limited amount of DNA. <laughs> Histone mRNA processing Histones H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 form the core of a nucleosome and thus are called core histones. Processing of core histones is done differently because typical histone mRNA lacks several features of other eukaryotic mRNAs, such as poly -a tail and introns. Thus, such mRNAs do not undergo splicing and their three-feet processing is done independent of most cleavage and polyadenylation factors. Core histone mRNAs have a special stem loop structure at 3' end that is recognized by a stem loop binding protein and a downstream sequence, called histone downstream element that recruits U7S nRNA. Cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor 73 cuts mRNA between stem loop and HDE histone variants, such as H2A, Z or H3.3, however, have introns and are processed as normal mRNAs including splicing and polyadenylation. See also Post-translational modification RNA editing RNA-seq